Hello and welcome to our webinar. My name is Andre Lepine. I'm the CEO at Vibra BI and today I would like to present some practical rules for visualizing budgets, plans and forecasts in, in Excel. Now this is our 10th webinar from Zebra BI webinar series and while we have covered monthly reporting and data visualization quite, quite in detail in, in, in our previous uh, webinars, I'm very excited to present a slightly different view and show you some, some rules for visualizing budgets uh, because the um, unfortunate fact is that, that we spend a lot of time designing uh, reports for performance management, so showing actuals versus budget and so on, monthly performance and so, and so on. But on the other hand, the way how we present the plans, the budgets for next year and forecasts and so on, uh, is usually still, most people still use just plain tables and, and, and so on. So it's kind of neglected area, I think. And it's very unfortunate because if you're able to present your plan for the next year in a, in, a, in a good way, in a very clear way, if you're able to, to demonstrate the significance of, of your plan and so on, you'll have probably much better chances to gain a, a, a better portion of the budget maybe and, and so on. So uh, in any case, the, the annual budget, for example, is, is probably one of the most important documents in each serious company. So. It's really unfortunate that the uh, presentation of budgets is usually quite, quite poor. So let me dive in straight to the topic. I have a lot of examples to, to show today. Uh, I hope it's going to be exciting for, for everyone. And before we, we dive in into our topic, just a few short not notifications. So there will be a Q&A section at the end of our webinar. So if you have any kind of questions, you can just type them into the, into the questions box and I will try to answer all of your questions at, at the end of this webinar. And second thing, we are recording all our web webinars, so uh, there will be a recording and we will send out the recording to all the people who, who registered. Okay, so presenting and visualizing budgets, plans and, and forecasts. Right, this is one example how, how a presentation of a plan looks like. Uh, I think you all, all agree that this is, uh, this is not really a, a presentation of the plan. It's, it's actually a, a, a planning table, which is um, you know, uh, maybe used for, for uh, the input of, of uh, the, the figures for, for the plan, but it's certainly not a, a presentation or certainly not a good presentation of a plan. So then I have seen, so, but I've seen a lot of presentations like, like this. Then in, in other presentations, people try to visualize this, this data. And uh, this is one attempt, which is also not very successful, I would say. And, uh, but we already see here in this chart, uh, however cluttered this chart is, we can see some typical uh, problems or, or challenges in uh, presenting plans. So for example, you have some specific data series. So you, you, ha you have some previous years. So for example, the annual time series is specific in, in, in visualizing uh, your, your plans because you have a few years of actual data and then you probably have the forecast forecast for the current year and then you also have your your plan or your budget for, for the next year right so so you have this this challenge of presenting this this time series but this time series is actually standard each each year or um, each each year when you present the, the, the plans right so you know so there must be a better way than just assigning colors to to every scenario that, that you have in in your plan and so on so let's start with this so a few basic ideas the first one is is this so in any case when you present your budgets you have at least some data here let me enable the um, Okay, so you always have at least 
some actual I'll just mark this AC for actual sorry for my poor <laughs> handwriting and of course you have the plan for the next year so this can be your plan this can be your 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 budget and this can be this can be net revenue this can be uh, costs expenses this can be EBIT, EBITDA or any kind of, of KPI that, that you are actually planning. It can be a, a composite KPI such as return on assets or, or, or ROI or any kind, of, any kind of KPI, but you always have at least these two typical scenarios. So actual data in your plan and your budget. And the first idea which is actually the, um, in, in the core of the international business communication standards as well, is to use the full pattern in, in, in your charts, in your data visualization, uh, to use the full pattern for actuals and then the, uh, uh, the outline for budgets, right? And, and you try to be, you want to be consistent with that so that you know it becomes like a like a traffic sign so so whenever you see just an outline uh, this means plan and i think this is a very intuitive way of coding actual versus budget data because the plan is a sort of an, an outline right so it's 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 an outline in the future and when you have the actuals they are the uh, you know, they, they are they're sort of, they have to fill up the, the plan, okay? So, so this is the basic, the basic idea, to present the plan always with a border, an outline, and use the, the full color for the actuals. Okay, so this is, this is like the first very basic idea that, that you probably will find, hopefully will, will find uh, useful. Okay, so this is, this is the beginning then. The next thing in practically every plan, when you start planning on, you know, on a, on a, on a yearly basis, this is the highlight. You want to use highlights like this, the differences, because this is, the, uh, this is probably the most typical way how you present the budget in comparison to, to this year, right? You, you want to, you want to uh, communicate yeah, simple messages like, okay, we plan we plan a 15.3% increase in net revenue, right? And this is, this is exactly how you, you can do it in, in a visual way. And it's very simple because, of course, uh, we have the arrow here. All the labels are, are here, so it's, it's exact. So we have the labels on top of columns and we have the label for, for the growth rate. So this is the second, I would say, idea how you can use the, uh, uh, the, the difference, the, the so-called difference highlights to present how, what, what does your plan look like for the next year. Of course, if you have costs here instead of net revenue, then the increase in costs is actually a bad thing. So, so you can have a growing, a growing difference, but in this case, it would have to be red to indicate that this, is, this has a bad influence on the uh, uh, end result of a company. So with this, I can show you a simple presentation of, of maybe three core KPIs in a, in a company. So this is now one slide that uses this so-called semantic notation of the actual. So we have the actuals, we have the plan for the next year. Now in EBDA, we have a certain growth. So a note here that um, this is not an arrow here, so these, these so-called difference highlights, they, they can have different, different shapes, right, in, in the uh, IBCS standard, uh, which I have men mentioned beforehand. Uh, this is actually the preferred shape to show the, the differences, but I think many people are, are actually used uh, to, to arrows like this, so uh, you, can, you can use both, both shapes. But see, now we have EBDA, we have net revenue, so 15.3% increase in net revenue and some increase of, of EBDA. And here on the right side, we have the expenses. These expenses are growing, right, which is not a good thing. So be careful here, you have to change the color. So, and this is now a correct presentation. 
Okay, so of course this is now still a very simple presentation of the plan, but I hope that it uh, demonstrates the few basic principles how you should uh, visualize your, your plans. Now in this slide, we have a few other things. The first one here, we have the key message, right? So in many presentations, those key messages are missing. So make sure that you have a good idea what you want to present on one slide or on one screen or on, on one page of your report when you're presenting plans. And make sure once you get this idea, the message, that you also write it here. So actually every slide in a presentation should, should have a, a key message like, like this. Then you have certain KPIs. There, there should always be a unit, like is this millions of, of US dollars or, or, or uh, thousands or, or you know, what, whatever the unit is. And then as the last layer of, of the communication, uh, you also want to integrate certain comments on the, the report page itself or on, on the slide or in your presentation. So the key, maybe some, some, some key remarks, why, where, 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 that is, where does this growth come from and so on. So, so make sure you, you leave some space, you reserve some space for short comments and integrate everything on one slide. All right. Now, we had, until now, we had a very simple time series. We had just actual data until, until this year and then the plan for the next year. But in reality, you start planning during the season, during this, this year. So you actually don't have the, the actual full data for the full year of 2016, for example, but you probably only have forecast or just an, you know, an outlook or something like that. So in this case, if you're using forecasts, then this is another idea. So you can use the hash pattern for forecasts. So this now is the forecast. So for example, FC for forecast, this is now the budget or the plan. And this, this here is the actual uh, actual data, right? So this is another idea. So forecast is maybe something, you know, in between the plan and, and the actual data. We know a little bit more than, than just, uh, you know, the plan. So that's why it's the, you know, the hatched pattern is the proposition of the international business communication standards. And, and this is, this is, uh, I would say, becoming a a really a, a standard way of presenting uh, forecasts and, 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 and budgets in many major companies across, especially across Europe, but also this is also coming to, to US. So I would say that this, this, is, this proposition is, is already implemented in, in, many, in many companies, right? So if you add the, the difference highlight, then this would look like this. Okay. Now with this, we can arrive at, at our next example. Now I have more KPIs and I have the, exactly the time series that I presented before. So I have the, the, the forecast here for, for our current year. I have the plan here. I have my actual data, so a time series for a few years back. And now I have the net income, I have net sales, I have some assets. So, so here on this side here, I have some values in, for example, in, in US dollars. This is also in US dollars. This is also in US dollars. Note that the, this chart here is um, very small and it should be small. This is done, you know, intentionally because all these charts here are scaled. And this is another very important feature when presenting multiple KPIs or when presenting, uh, for example, one KPI like, like sales, for example, across multiple profit centers or markets or customers or products, programs and, and, and so on. So you want to make sure that the charts that depict the same unit of a KPI are scaled because in this way we can understand 
what is the relation, how much net income do we plan in relation to net sales, and uh, we also understand the differences, right? We, we understand that uh, we are growing our, our net sales here for, for 11%, for example, and this is quite significant growth, but the net income is actually not growing uh, with the with the same pace because of some other reasons of course probably yeah we have some growing costs on the other side so that's how we understand all the relations here as we move here to the center of this report here we see that i have certain i have some other types of kpis like uh, some percentages here return on sales in percent as a turnover as as an index so this time I'm using different shape here, so I'm using the, this is the so-called pin chart, or we like to call it the, the lollipop chart, and we're using the um, lollipop chart for percentages. And this just helps understand the data better, because immediately when I see, for example, the columns, I understand, okay, this is some sort of financial data in, in currency. Uh, so the sales, the cost, and, and, and so on in, in US dollars, in euros, or something like that. Whereas here, uh, if I see this, this pin and just the dots, I understand that this is a percentage. Okay, so as you see, the arrangement of charts and design of charts on the page can vary. And so you, you can have different sort of layouts when you're designing your, your reports. And this particular case here uses the idea of, of a tree, right? So like you have a return on assets tree. So it's, um, it's basically a DuPont uh, uh, scheme, right? And um, another principle of visualizing your, your plans is to show more items, to show more, more elements visually. Right, so in many times we, we are just sort of focused on, on, on visualizing the uh, most aggregate, most aggregated data, just for example on, on a company level and so on, which is which is uh, which results in, 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 in poor poor information density. So that's why it's important that you are able to visualize more data elements on the same page. Uh, like in this case, we are presenting the plan, um, for example, the sales plan for the next year across different markets. Uh, this could be um, product markets, um, profit centers, whatever. The idea is to put everything on one page and, of course, again, scale it, right? So we can understand that uh, USA is our uh, biggest market here and we have really good growth here. Um, it's also the most important market. Uh, for example, Germany is a little... Uh, it's a little smaller market, but still has growth and, and, and so on. Then we have some declining markets um, with negative growth, uh, where we plan the negative growth for the next year and, and so on. So everything is sort of scaled. Um, and we, so we understand the importance of, of each market. So this, these are the few basic, I would say, ideas how to visualize the typical data sets so far, we have only focused on, on some annual data series. Um, of course, when you're actually planning, doing the plans, um, of course, you, you, you go from, from annual to, to, monthly, to monthly level, and of course, you, you then uh, distribute the plan, um, maybe to, um, uh, you, know, you, you go into a lot of details. But what I wanted to uh, say here is that even while you're planning, you can use data visualization uh, to help you create a better plan. So what I intend to show you also in, in, in Excel is how to use data visualization in planning systems themselves. So while you're, you're planning, while you're, while you're entering, for example, the, uh, the data in your input tables for, for plan, for example, here we have some sales planning example and um, we are planning the yeah, units sold and the, the prices uh, per unit uh, on a monthly basis and so on. You can use charts uh, to display in, in an interactive fashion uh, what you have uh, planned 
and what, what the result of, of your plan is and how does, for example, uh, a price change in a certain month, how does it affect the whole plan? And you can actually see it, uh, if you visualize it correctly, you can actually see it uh, like, like here, for example, we see this is, this is the price now and we see the monthly price and we see, okay, in April, we plan the, uh, the de decrease of, of the price here and the decrease of the price here. And when, when you will, uh, for example, switch to, to sales, you will see the effect in, in, of this in, in a different chart. I, I will show you this example and also how, how it's done. Okay, uh, the next thing are the, uh, are the charts. Okay, so far we had very simple charts, um, just basic column charts and some pin charts and, and, and so on. Um, the, the, the next thing is um, the next type of chart that you probably will uh, want to use is uh, the so-called uh, variance chart. So, for example, here we are just visualizing the, um, the growth rates uh, from year to year. So, we see from, from in 2014 we had... 0.4% uh, growth and then we had a little better growth but here from 2016 to 2017 we actually planned um, uh, negative growth and this is now for example the growth in percent so you see you have a little green color here and a little red color here so you have green red so-called plus minus charts uh, for visualizing the variances the differences the variances and the, um, I would say the, maybe the ultimate chart for presenting budgets is probably the uh, waterfall chart or the so-called bridge chart. After you plan your, your, your brands, for example, you might want to present the, um, uh, your, your brands or I would say the influence or the contribution of each brand to your total results. So for example, this here is now the forecast for, for this year and this is the plan for the, for the next year. So first idea, so this is a typical bridge chart, right? But in, when you're planning, when you're planning, you have two typical scenarios, right? So, so this is actually the, the, the budget and this is the forecast, right? So if you want to be consistent with the previous idea, we want to do it like this. So this is now the this is now the budget. So it's empty. This is what we plan, and this is our current forecast for for this year. And here in between, I have the contribution of each brand. For example, we have certain brands which are planned to to increase their um, their net sales, their revenue um, by the next year. So we have some some yeah some positive positive brands here, then we have certain certain products, certain brands that are actually going to uh, decline in, in sales here. Now, in a presentation like this, we have a few more problems. First of all, uh, the, uh, the labels are diagonal, which is never a good uh, idea in, in visualization or in, in reporting. And the other thing is, of course, that you probably have a lot of products or a lot of customers. And so you, you might have a data set with a lot of items here. And of course, this will result in, um, um, it, it, it will get crowded, right? And um, so one idea how to solve this is to actually elim el eliminate the, um, um, the elements in between, right, in the middle, because uh, these elements are more or less, you know, on the plan, they, they will not change much from, from previous year and so on. And actually, so, so we are actually, we actually want to be focused on, on the things that are actually changing. So, so our top five products, for example, and here on our bottom five or, or top declining, declining product and just eliminate, eliminate those uh, in, 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 in the center. So you can just um, recalculate, uh, you recalculate your data set and show it in this way, uh, where you have the top five brands. For example, you have the top five brands here and then you have others. So you, you, you just sum up everything in between and here you have your worst performing elements, uh, so products, brands, and, and so on. So, so now we are constructing our, our, 
our presentation. So we have 4.6% growth from, we, we plan 4.6% growth from, from this year to, to the next one. And these are my top five performing brands, growing brands, that's what we plan. And these are top five declining brands. And uh, you can also then add the, um, some, some comments for, for each brand or for the top brands, at least how we are going to achieve this or what do we need for this or, or whatever you need to, to add to, to your report. And uh, this is basically now um, an informative, um, completely visual way how to present this, this uh, situation for the plan for, for the next year. Uh, now you can do it in this way, maybe you can then, uh, you can also do it in this way, so um, to put more focus or even more exactly place your, your comments like this, so you can link comments to each, um, you know, to, to each element on, on the chart and just, you know, explain it in, in a very detailed and precise, precise way. And it, of course it has to be all these details, they, they have to be very short. Uh, and um, yeah, so this could be one way. And um, but in fact, whenever you have products like this, you see we still have the labels presented diagonally. If I wanted them to to be displayed um, in horizontal way, I would actually have to extend this chart a lot. So maybe a better idea is to use another layout. Okay, and actually turn the whole chart for 90 degrees, right? Just turn it clockwise and um, use the chart with a vertical axis instead of this classic bridge that we are accustomed to. So uh, if you try this, you will arrive at um, design like this. So this is now exactly the same data set, but this time this whole waterfall chart is placed vertically, so it has a vertical axis, right? I have my, I have my my brands here. Now I have much more space, right? Now I have put back all my brands here, so I have I don't know 15 or something brands, but you can actually place much more of them. So this is one advantage of using the right, you know, orientation of the chart. So you can put everything in in rows. And then you can start combining things, okay? So, for example, here I have the forecast. I have the uh, contribution of, of, each, of each product. But here, as we move on, on the right side, I have growth in percent, okay? So I have put, I have more space now. So I'm able to put, actually, to, to visualize the, um, the growth rates in percent, uh, for each product. So here, this is my absolute figure. This is the net sales. This is the um, this is the change in in net sales. So plus one hundred and thirty two thousand dollars. And here I have the growth in percent. So the planned growth in in percent. Okay. So we we see that you know certain. So for example, now we this is much more precise because if you just focus on top five. So before that, I had I had the top five products here, top five, right? Which is which is fine because these are the ones that are really important in terms in terms of you know dollars. Uh, but you know here maybe I see some other things on on the sixth product, for example, which is not so significant, not not so important at the moment, right? But it does have we we do plan very good growth so this is this is maybe an interesting uh, you know interesting product to 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 take a look at uh, and this is it's displayed on 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 this example whereas it's not displayed in in this you know uh, a little a little bit impoverished uh, bridge chart here so this is then another way as you as you see here again i have the lollipop chart for showing the percentages so the variance in in percent and this uh, variance chart also has a certain feature. Uh, as you see here, we, you can have some values where your percentages will just fly off the, um, uh, you know, uh, across uh, certain values. Uh, they can be, you know, you can have growth rates like 300% or something. 
uh, which will spoil your visualization uh, because it's just an outlier. Uh, in this case, uh, you might want to chop the, the, um, the outliers uh, to limit the outliers. For example, here we have limited the outliers to 50% and everything which is above 50 uh, is actually cut, but it's not just cut and it's missing from the data visualization. It actually has, um, you know, the um, a shape, an arrow that indicate that the value is just lying somewhere outside the area of the chart, but the label, the correct label is still inside, so you can actually read the, the label. Again, we have the comments, and uh, again, this is another way of um, maybe showing your, your uh, plans, presenting your plans. Uh, probably even more standard way or, you know, popular way that you might want to, to, to use is to use this exact layout for EBDA or for EBIT. So the EBIT bridge, so you can start, uh, instead of net sales, you can have EBIT. So you have EBIT here uh, for this year, and then at the end you have EBIT for uh, the next year. And in between, you have the, um, you know, the elements which contribute to the, to the change of the EBIT for the next year. So things like, instead of products, here in between, you have the uh, things like uh, price changes, volume changes, currency, currency fluctuation effect that you plan for the next year, and, and everything that influences EBIT, you can just you know uh, stack it in, in, in rows here, and it, you will um, arrive at the so-called EBIT bridge, but you can actually use the exact same layout. Okay, so these were a few of the ideas I want to switch to Excel now to show you to show you how you can do this in Excel and along I will also explain a few a few other um, let's keep this um, a few other um, templates and ideas that you want to use so first of all first of all basic charts we'll uh, we'll use Zebra BI now so to, to demonstrate this so this is a typical situation you have the years actual and budget and if you just insert a simple chart it looks like this so this is my ABDA of course first you want to um, fix the uh, display of the labels in this case I'll use I'll just use yeah, millions maybe we've done one decimal place okay so we have the uh, EBIT now I'll just move it just use the move function here and move it, for example, uh, let's do a simple, like this. Okay, so this is my ABDA now, and you want to use the difference highlights, right? So this is the difference highlight. You can display the relative, uh, relative label. Usually, relative label is the most intuitive that, that's, you know, um, people sort of talk in percentages. If you want to have the absolute value, so it's 1.5 million, um, you know, 1.5 million more um, plant ABDA than, than this year. Uh, then you just um, display the absolute label or, or not. So, so this is the ABDA here. Now, of course, you do not have to use this, you know, the, 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 the black color. I, I have the black color because it's the, it's the default color, but you can actually customize this, this color so you can use, um, yeah, let's, uh, let's quickly create a, uh, some, some new styles so or your, your custom, custom style. So for example, you can, it, this can be your, your corporate, corporate style and um, let's use a different, uh, let's use a sort of a, maybe a little bit, you know, grayish blue color or something. Okay, so, so you, can, you can basically choose, you, you can type the RGB values to exactly match your, your uh, corporate design or something. So, so if, you, if you do that, if you do that, now you have your custom style here and you will have your corporate colors. But as you see, the standard notation for the budget is, is still here. So it works, it works basically in any color that you, that you actually are using, uh, but make sure that you don't use 
either two uh, either colors that are too light um, or maybe bright like very bright or uh, you know for example red color I would not use the red color as the default color because you want to still have space like uh, you know to highlight uh, differences and variances and so on in red green so make sure that your base basic uh, colors are sort of toned down a little bit grayish and, and so on so this was my ABDA now if you have the forecast then you will probably have three columns of data so we have actual series for three years and then for this year we have the um, forecast and then we have the budget so you just put put it in three columns and you will get the um, you will now get the forecast here and it's the same thing so it works in exactly the same thing if you add the difference highlight here now I have the the difference between my this year's forecast and the next year's budget okay now if we just try to continue to build this so we'll, we'll add the um, net revenue let me put it here I did not mark I think it was something like that this okay of course you want to make sure that everything is aligned right this chart is aligned with this one I will this to millions as well in one decimal place um, at the difference highlight okay and now now you have this problem of scaling you want to make sure that the charts are scaled okay so I just scale the charts control click to select both charts and now here we have the option to scale charts okay so in Zebra BI this is done automatically every chart in Zebra BI has this ability to be automatically scaled right so even now if this um, um, value now increases uh, here this one will get even more suppressed or um, you know if this one will grow it will it will grow uh, so it will always be be scaled and uh, the last one are expenses now here with the expenses now uh, let me put this let's say like this Okay, we'll do the same with expenses, but this time with expenses. One that's not place. We had the difference highlight, but you see now we have a different meaning, different meaning, so that's why uh, you uh, have to switch here to increase is bad. Okay, so it's like this. Again, this chart should be scaled to, to those two charts as well. So I'll just break break up this this group and I will scale all three charts like this okay and this is you know the basic presentation now you now you, you might want to add certain certain comments here uh, just to add a little bit of uh, you know text and, and things things like that and this is your basic presentation you will uh, type in your message here and then you can export this to, to PowerPoint, for example. And now another thing in, in a typical planning process, uh, you have a lot of iterations, which is, uh, which is painstaking because it takes a lot of time to present, you know, to, to create all the slides and, and for each presentation. And, you know, every time you communicate, um, you know, a certain plan, you have to present uh, the same things again and, and, and so on so it's it's a really it's a very time-consuming process so what you want to achieve eventually is to have some sort of templates like like this and now you want to have linked slides right so so let me do the let me do it like this so now I have I have created a linked slide so this the first one was just a fixed picture just a one-time slide but this one now is linked back to my Excel so for example when when you know when your management will uh, um, you know will say okay but we really uh, we really want to have um, you know we really want to have I don't know um, 7.5 million uh, you know ABD or something you will go back you will plan the things and so on and then maybe you will you know, be able to squeeze the, the, the expenses, uh, you know, decrease them a little bit down. And now we have uh, seven, ah, 
okay, so let's say 7.7, .7, right? So this situation now has changed, and when you go back to your presentation, you see here you have 7.7 .7 million EBDA, uh, the percentages, everything is completely up, uh, updated, uh, while the, uh, the first one, this is still the old version of, of the plan. So, so make sure that you're, uh, you know, just delete this, make, make sure that you're using linked PowerPoint slides back to your, your Excel, and uh, so you can have a reusable layouts, templates, um, so you can just change when the, uh, change the presentation when the uh, situation changes. Okay, so this was the basic uh, thing. The multiples, the multiples, I'll just quickly show the, the multiples. So, in the same way that you're presenting one chart, you can actually present more charts, um, more charts, right? So, what you want to have is, if you have different profit centers or markets and so on, uh, you want to present them maybe like this. So, this is one example. I have uh, four markets and now I have got four charts. And when you're doing this, of course, the charts have to be scaled. Zebra BI scales the charts automatically right away, so everything is already scaled here. And of course, we want to switch, um, fix the um, number format. I do this. Um, it is done automatically on all four charts. Uh, what you want to do is also maybe sort the charts, so make sure that you know the most important. So, for example, you will sort by target, so by, by, by the plan. In and descending. So whenever you have the plan, most probably you will want to sort everything by the value of, of the plan. So you, you make sure that you know the, the most important, uh, most significant elements are on the top left uh, screen, top left position on, on your screen or your slide and so on. And um, yeah, and here then you just add the uh, difference highlight and um, Zero BI will just do it on, on all charts at once, and, and this is again your slide, and uh, then uh, you can just link it to your PowerPoint, and uh, yeah, just in a few few seconds we have created an, a new slide, which is again linked back to my uh, template. Okay, those who are familiar or are already using Zebra BI, you already know all this all this stuff. But now I would want to move to another example and uh, just show you how you can use data visualization while you're planning. Okay, so so this is um, I have a very simple demo example uh, where we are you know planning the sales by brand. So I have certain product certain brands here and you know let's say we are you know planning those brands and uh, of course maybe different key account managers or, or product managers are uh, you know planning different different brands but uh, just you know as an idea as you see here you know we have some planning tables this is where you input your data but now we are using data visualization exactly you know the, the same charts that I explained before to show you know to show interactively uh, what you have planned so for example here I have planned some some you know um, monthly quantities and if I want to display this you know, I just click here and my charts will update and I see, aha, my units are, you know, increasing. This is the plan for the next year, 2017, for, for this product. And we planned 16.7 thousand units or something increase. This is the, uh, this is a small chart here to present the, um, uh, the changes. Okay, so these are the changes in percent and displayed visually in this lollipop chart here. But so I see, okay, my plan for this product is, you know, we'll sell more, more units, but unfortunately my price uh, is, is going down. We, we plan some decrease of price here and decrease of price here and so on. And I see this visually quite, um, quite in a simple, simple way. I also see that, you know, the average 
uh, annual price has decreased and so on. And then when I, while I switch to sales, I see how, how the two um, come, come together in, in, in sales. So what I have used here is a simple Excel trick. So, so I'm simply using the, um, um, uh, the radio buttons in, in Excel. So um, I have used the, um, um, the form controls. So here is where you will find your form controls in Excel. And this is a really simple way to add interactivity to, to your Excel file. So you see, this is the option option button here so you can just add now uh, the, the new the new radio button like like this uh, so I have used three radio buttons for units price and so on and of course all Zebra BI charts are dynamic right so this time I did not insert my charts directly from from this from this you know from from my source data which is here but I have used a little trick, okay? So when you, when a user clicks on this radio button here, so you see this radio button, let me open the controls for the radio button. Okay, These radio, this radio button is linked to, uh, to a, a cell here, okay? So, um, so this, is, this is the cell, so when I, when I click on, on the radio button, the value of this uh, cell here changes. So this is my KPI number one units, KPI number two price, and KPI number three uh, sales. Okay, and now I have um, I have here a table which actually uses this in a formula. So so the formula for this is now offset. Okay, so this chart here. Let me just delete it and, and create it once more. Okay, so this is now my table, my sales, and so on. Here I have uh, the formula offset, so it makes sure that, you know, when I click, this is now KPI number one, so, so this formula here returns the, um, the result from one row below, below my 2013 column here. Okay, when I switch to price, it's two rows, okay? So it, then it's one, two, two rows, so I get the price. So I have the same, then I have the offset formula here, offset formula here, and so on. So the whole table basically consists of the offset formulas. And now I insert the chart. Oh, this is now my custom style. <laughs> okay, let's leave it, uh, let's leave it blue. All right, and... Um, We'll add this and maybe uh, one more decimal place. Okay, this time actually I think I, I had the uh, absolute, yeah, absolute like this. And uh, yeah, you put the chart here and you, you of course, you, you align it and, and, and so on. So make, make sure the, the alignment, of course, is very, uh, very important in, in um, you know, in, in design. But now, you see this this works now so I have units the data here changes and as a result of course my my chart also changes because it it just shows whatever is is written here so so this is a simple trick how you can use things like radio buttons um, Excel's radio buttons or um, you will also find here um, you know under form controls you will find uh, the spin buttons and uh, scrollers Something like that. So you can use uh, you can use this, for example, when people click on the scroller. You know, um, maybe my 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 12 month will you know change. Uh, so you have a rolling period of last 12 month, or you, you can just you know slide uh, slide through a bigger time series or things like that. So so this is this is a quick idea. In uh, in my next webinar, I will actually go step by step and. I'll show many tricks like this, so I, I will just dedicate a whole, a whole webinar to tricks like that, and we'll, we'll just do it in, in, in Excel the, the, for the whole webinar. Okay, so this is the idea. So once you have the, um, you have everything uh, planned, okay, then 
and then you have on on your next pages you can have linked linked reports like this so for example i have planned my my amoxil brand for example and but here i have the whole presentation of all the brands that i have planned so again now i have the actual i have the forecast and i have the budget for the next year right so this is now an over the overview of all the brands and i see okay i have planned uh, amox amoxil is my best best brand most important one and we plan positive growth here so this is another type of chart which has the integrated variances uh, displayed uh, in the same chart okay so so this is the integrated variance chart um, this is done now how this is done is I have a pivot table here uh, let me okay, make this a little bigger right I have the pivot table this pivot table is actually linked back to my planned data right so whenever you change your plan you just you know press refresh refresh all and your you know your data will, will uh, change and now you uh, present the um, you do the the chart okay okay the um, now but now I have a little problem here because I have the uh, budget and forecast and for example the Z Zebra BI in, in actually in 90% of cases you actually want to present forecast compared to budget or actual compared to budget so actual minus budget is your default variance right because you're you know comparing actual to budget each month but when presenting plans uh, you have a different situation because this is now forecast for year 2016 and, and budget for the next year and you actually want to want to display budget minus forecast okay so that's why if you want to you know turn this the variances around because it's actually a bigger budget than, than the forecast so this should be plus 28 not minus 28 so to solve this in, in Zebra BI uh, what you can do is you can just use a, a trick uh, you can copy the existing style and uh, I have already done this here so I have a zebra planning style now um, and when I do this let's hope this works okay now it works so now you see now I have the correct picture let me just put this in inside okay and uh, now I have plus 28 and it's green and so on because now it's calculated budget minus forecast. For those of you who are already using Zebra BI, um, uh, I will just show you this and then we are done with the presentation. So um, what you can do is go under scenarios, okay? And uh, the trick is, you know, to, to, to actually to switch to switch the labels right so you switch the budget and the actual label so under actual you you put budget right and under budget you put you put actual and th this will do the trick so so that now it will not be actual minus budget but it will be budget minus actual so this is a little trick that, that uh, how you can achieve that uh, you will have budget calculations the planning calculations in in variance charts in Zebra BI. So th this was the information for um, maybe some advanced users of, of Zebra BI who are, you know, already using this. Okay, I don't want to be too long. Uh, this was, uh, I hope this was, uh, you know, uh, that I have shown some, some new ideas, uh, new ways how to, how to present your, your budgets. And now let's, let's give a word to, to our audience. Uh, if you have any questions, or if you want me to, you know, focus on show you some some more details or something, please let me know. Just before before we do the Q and A, here are the resources. If you go to Zebra BI blog uh, and Zebra BI resources, you will find other webinars, other webinars, so you can use those. And uh, if you haven't tried Zebra BI, you can just download the the full version for free for 30 days 
um, just go to our Zebra BI uh, website and you will find the, the, you know, the free, free download. So you can just try this yourself and uh, we will create the uh, recording and also the uh, examples that I have shown, uh, we'll just attach them to, to, to the download page so you can actually, you'll be able to download all these examples and just try this yourself in, in Excel. Okay, so the uh, Q&A. In Zebra BI, you actually have four types of uh, uh, waterfall charts. So you have the ones with the vertical axis here, and then you have the ones with the horizontal axis. You have the bridge charts, so the ones with the variances in between them, and also the structure waterfall chart. So you're, you're covered, and each of them has uh, you know, uh, a lot of features. So for example, let's make this one a little bit bigger. So um, you have the difference highlight, uh, so the uh, difference between forecast and budget for the next year here in percent, you can display also the absolute label and, and so on. So this one is the, the you know, plain um, bridge chart, but the uh, vertical one, I have an example here. So if you insert a waterfall chart with the uh, vertical axis, it's actually quite interesting because now I can insert this one into my report into a table so you can actually combine charts with vertical axis uh, and tables um, and this can give you a little bit more flexibility so for example here I have inserted the chart without the labels without the axis labels so just the numbers okay but the labels I put in a separate column in a table so this this is how you can combine you know columns with charts and and a few more columns and another vertical chart and so on and this gives you also a little bit more flexibility um, because now you can for example align this label um, to, to to the right like it it would be in a chart or you can align it to 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 the left which is actually better okay you can uh, put some labels in, in bold and, and so on. And uh, yeah, and this is the, the only thing that you have to be careful in, in, in the waterfall charts in Zebra BI. All you have to do is uh, actually insert another, use another column uh, before the numbers to mark um, that, um, you know, to mark certain types of, of columns. So, so you basically have the uh, fixed columns and you use the equal sign for that and here you have the equal sign because this is also a, a fixed column so without the equal sign um, all the you know values are just added or subtracted uh, with the equal sign you fix uh, the column you get this and uh, you can actually also have the sub calculations in Zebra BI so for example you can do you can do this uh, it's actually a kind of a difference highlight, right? And another way of, of using different highlights uh, because this is now the total difference. So forecast 2016 um, um, compared to budget for my next year, right? So the, the total growth here and uh, you just have to specify which elements are subtracted. So the, the previous element budget has to be subtracted from the element which is 17 rows in front of this one, right? So that's why you put just put the 17 here and you get the difference between this one and minus 17 um, element before. And that's how you can get actually any kind of difference between this one and this one or this one and this one and so on. So this is the vertical uh, waterfall chart and it's really practical to use them in uh, reports like this uh, because you can uh, add different charts for example let's let's add the, the lollipop chart also the, the vertical one now I will insert this one for example here okay let's make it a little bit more wide okay and this one now uh, you can use this one for relative growth right because here you have the absolute variance the absolute growth and here we'll just use it, this one for the relative one. So you, now you also have the percentages, 
right? So you can uh, create much more uh, comprehensive, much more exact and interesting reports. Um, and with these ones, you can then use the, uh, you can, for example, limit the outliers if some, you know, if some percentages um, are very, um, very big, you can limit this to I just say, okay, everything above 100% will get, um, you know, will be limited, but still you have the, the right figure here and you have this arrow indicating that this is an actually an outlier, um, right? So this is how you can use the waterfall, vertical waterfall chart. Unfortunately, there, there's no, you know, there's no simple way, but uh, let me try to just give you the idea. Uh, I have no idea what will happen now in Excel. Just let's, okay, this is, uh, this is how Excel does it, right? So, okay, so, well, one, one simple way, one simple way, if you're just doing this one time, right? One time, then you, you might want to use the, uh, you know, just things like, oh, sorry. Um, first, you want to create some space here. Well, unfortunately, we don't have the time now to go through everything because if I wanted to do, you know, a webinar like this with pure Excel, it would probably take uh, take us eight hours. So that's why I'm not actually using, uh, you know, plain Excel charts anymore. So, but basically, you know, one idea is just to use the, the shapes, right? So you can use the shapes and then you do the, the arrow. So you can just draw. Okay, uh, when you draw, if you press shift, then you will get the straight line like this. And of course, but now this is completely manual, right? So you can, you know, you can color everything and, and, and so on. You can make the, you know, exactly the same weight and type of, of, of arrow and stuff like that. But of course, this is completely, um, completely static. Now, if your plan changes, uh, you know, Um, this correct or not? One zero two. Oh. Well, you you see my point. It's not, you know, it's a, uh, it's just a static. Um, so it's, it's this is only this is only okay if you're doing a one time type of, of presentation, right? You, you just can't do. You don't, you know, you don't have the time to do this um, each time for each chart. So basically. Um, the way how to do it in Excel is, uh, if you want to do it dynamically, then you have to add certain, you know, certain uh, additional series here uh, with formulas, uh, you know, to, to, to create another, um, basically you need um, co coordinates and you put more series, additional uh, series on the chart and um, you make those ch series a uh, scatter plot. So you basically draw with a scatter plot, okay? And you type the formulas in your new series, new columns, and you know, th there is a way, and if you'll Google this, I'm, I'm sure that you'll, you know, get the, the cookbook recipe, how to do it. Uh, but, you know, it just requires you to create all the formulas and, and then, you know, put everything on the chart and, you know, fix the chart and, and, and so on. So it's very time consuming. They will see the charts. Uh, they will see the charts, uh, but the charts will not update, right? So, for example, if now somebody else will, you know, change the plan here uh, without Zebra BI, of course, the charts will not um, update. And also, depending on the version of Excel, they might get the, um, some, some formula error, right? So if you want to share, um, you, you know, your work with somebody else, you have a lot of options. Uh, what you can do is, uh, okay, we have seen the, you know, you can just send the PowerPoint or you can create the, the PDF. So you can create the, a PDF file, which would be the most secure way, I would say, to um, most secure way how to um, you know distribute the reports but uh, if you want to um, uh, if, if you want them to open this in Excel then um, then you can export to Excel workbook 
right? So, so you just uh, you just click this, and this will produce a version without you know without the formulas and everything. So it will be a completely clean uh, Excel file without any zebra stuff in it. And uh, but of course uh, the the charts will be static, right? In any case, uh, when you do the export like this, the charts are then static. Um, but here with this export, you have two types of export: static static charts or uh, uh, a snapshot, which will which will also um, convert any other formulas to you know values. So you have a completely uh, you know, completely fixed um, values and, and charts and, and, and so on. And then um, this, of course, produces, uh, this produces a copy of, of this um, Excel file and anybody can then open it. Uh, then there are other options like, um, other options, there, there's a Zebra BI uh, dynamic viewer. So it's basically a very light version of Zebra BI without any of the um, design options. Uh, so people can just uh, can install the, the viewer, and uh, this is um, this is then good for cases where you have a lot of interactive, uh, you know, where you basically want to build a Excel dashboard in an interactive way and so on. And then there's the last option is to publish uh, the reports, so you can publish the reports to SharePoint, um, but uh, this this then uh, requires you to have a SharePoint uh, server. Um, in your company. So if you have the SharePoint server, you can actually then upload all the documents to SharePoint and people will see it in, in the browser. These are then the options. Okay. Yeah, sure. Everything is uh, updated. Um, everything is updated. So do, do I still have this? Oops, sorry. Um, I think this was the this was the linked one. I hope so. Was it? Yeah. So it was the linked one. So yeah, absolutely. If you, for example, if your plan will change on the, uh, uh, I don't know, um, where is Germany, for example, here, and uh, Germany will, you know, increase to like this. Germany has now increased. Uh, when you go back, it's two thousand and. and and 60. Of course, even if it becomes the, the you know, if it becomes the, the biggest market, everything else, you know, it's, it's, now it's correctly scaled. We see this one is, so all the charts are, you see, everything is updated, completely everything. So basically, this is the range, right? This is, this is the range. This is the whole print area, print area. So if you have a print area, on your uh, Excel, when you export this uh, to PowerPoint, the whole print area is exported to, um, is linked to, to the slide, okay? So that's why we also have the uh, add page here where you actually, uh, where you can use the templates. Um, actually, all the uh, slides that I've created are, you know, I've used the uh, templates like, you have templates like, you know, um, uh, you add page for uh, to um, you see you have the page template uh, which already has the print area defined so you can either you know print it and you have a perfect printout for the paper um, when you link it to PowerPoint it fits PowerPoint perfectly all right guys thank you very much for your attention see you next time with our webinars uh, if you have any other questions, you can reach me at my at my address or via LinkedIn or, or Twitter. So um, yeah, we are open to everybody. So you can just um, send us your, your questions or, or comments. Thank you very much. Bye.